All right, so it'd be helpful if you actually had a um, periodic table there in front of you. There's a few things I'm going to show you there on your periodic table. Now, one thing that I'm going to show you is how to write a formula. Okay, I'm going to tell you what zinc, its charge is. Zinc always has a positive two charge. It's a, trans a transition metal. Some of the transition metals actually can have more than one charge, and that's why they're a little strange. Um, but I'll tell you, zinc's is a positive two charge. Now, what would the charge on aluminum be? Look at where it's at on the periodic table. Positive three. Everybody understand that right here? This is gonna be positive one, positive two, positive three. This will be plus four or minus four. This will be negative three, negative two, negative one. Okay? What? There's some up there. All right, aluminum's positive three. Right there. What's potassium? That's going to be positive one. What would gallium be? It'd be positive three. All right, silver is another transition metal. I'm going to tell you its charge. Silver is a positive one. And then what would lithium be? Positive one. So you have all your, your uh, positive ions at the top, okay? And then all of your negative ions at the side right here. So chloride is just chlorine. So what is chlorine gonna be? Negative, negative one. one. What's phosphide or phosphorus? Negative three. What about nitride, nitrogen? Negative three also. What about oxide? Oxygen? Negative two. Negative two. Fluoride? Fluorine? Negative one. Negative one. And sulfide? Sulfur? That's negative two. Okay, now, when we are talking about naming, all right, anions always change the name to IDE. All right, and when I say anions, I should say negatively charged ions because we haven't talked about that yet. All right, I'm going to write a couple little notes over here to the side. All right, this is the best thing I'm going to give you all year. Okay, are you ready? Ten years from now, when you're older, maybe married, maybe have kids, you will remember this. And you will think this is the dumbest thing that Mr. Harrington ever said, but I still remember it. Okay, so there are names specifically for positive ions and negative ions, okay? I'm going to teach you how to remember what the positive ions are called. Are you ready? All right. You feel so, I can tell you're They're so proud of this ions. already. You are so proud of this. No, this is honestly I'm embarrassing. So excited to hear it. Here we go. Positively charged ions are called cat ions and they are positive. All right? You're so proud of it. All right. How is that embarrassing? Cat ions. What are you playing? Pause. Oh my god, you won. You won. It's him. Okay? Cat ions, positively charged. So any ion that is a positive ion, it's a cation. 
All right? Now, Wait, why is it, why is it say it's called a cation. Oh, it's just a... It's positive. All right, now, a negative ion is called an anion. You can remember that because it's just one letter off from onion, and onions make you cry, and that's negative. It's bad. All it says is cations equals positive, anions equal negative. I like the little Got to. What was happening? All right. Cations, positive. Anions, negative. So all these ones that are down the side over here, these are anions. All the ones that are across the top, those are cations. All right. Now, I'm also going to teach you an easy way to be able to figure out what the formula for the compound is. Now, I'm gonna show you the hard way first, and then I'm gonna show you an easy way. So be thankful that you don't have to do the hard way every time. All right, so here's what happens. Let's say that we are pairing together aluminum and chlorine. So here's aluminum right here, and I'm showing its Lewis dot structure. So it has three valence electrons. All right, how many does chlorine have? Seven. It's in group seven. It's got seven valence electrons. So how many does chlorine want to gain? Wants to gain one. Well, aluminum has how many to give up? Three. So this is what happens. Aluminum loses one electron. Chlorine is now happy, but aluminum's not happy. So you gotta bring in another chlorine. Then that chlorine will be unhappy. It will be. So aluminum gives up that electron. That chlorine's happy, but aluminum's not happy. So you got to bring in one more chlorine. And aluminum gives up that last electron. Now the chlorines are all happy, and aluminum is also happy. So your formula is AlCl3 because I have three chlorine. Will you ever have more than one? More than one? Uh, you could, yeah. Is there an example of that in this? Thing? Yes. Um, Wait, is that what H2O? Like, kind of uh, well, H2O is a covalent compound, so that's a little different. But we will get to that later. It's coming. So my formula that I would put in here is AlCl3. And that's what I would put in that box right there. Okay? All right, now, an example where you have... Um, all right, let's look at zinc pairing with nitride. Okay? Zinc and nitride. All right, zinc has two valence electrons and nitride has five. Okay, zinc wants to give up two. Nitrogen wants to take three. So zinc's gonna give up both these electrons right here. Zinc's happy, but nitrogen's not happy. So you bring in another zinc. No, you said that. Happened. No, zinc's happy, but nitrogen's not happy. Wait, huh? Zinc gave up two. That's what it wanted to do, but nitrogen wants three, so it wasn't happy. So I brought in another zinc. So nitrogen's not. So now one of the two zinc electrons goes to the, to the first nitrogen. Now that nitrogen's happy, but zinc wants to give up one more. So I have to bring in a second nitrogen. This electron's gonna go here. Zinc is happy, but the nitrogen still wants two more. 
So you bring in a third zinc atom. Gives up that electron and that electron. Now everybody's happy. Okay? It, it, will, it will click. Trust me. So your formula is going to be Zn3 N2. Everybody understand where I got that? Because I have three zincs, so Zn3, two nitrogens, so N2. Why didn't you get for the first one? How many do I have for the first one? I had one aluminum, three chlorine. So aluminum gets the one, which when you write a formula, you don't write one. So if there's just one of something, you just don't put a number. All right, so in your slot right um, here, it'd be Zn3, N2. All right, everybody ready for a shortcut? I was about to say, do we have to draw this? Well, do we have to know both? Mm, you can mostly use the shortcut. You guys have a question? No, I think I figured it out. The shortcut. What do you think it is? I, mean, I don't know if this is just a coincidence, but like, uh, nitrogen is the one that has the negative charge, and then the nitrogen has a positive charge. Yes. And I'm gonna show you like an easier way to put it on paper, but yeah, that's basically what it is. So if you look at this, all right, zinc we know has a positive two charge. Okay, zinc has a positive two charge. Nitrogen has a negative three charge. This is called the crisscross method. All you have to do is take the three from nitrogen, bring it to zinc, and take the two from zinc and bring it to nitrogen, and that becomes your formula. Zn3N2. Does it matter if it's positive Well, the negative and the positive go away once you actually crisscross it. So you're only crisscrossing the number, not the charge. Because it, look, here's why this works. If you have three positive twos, it cancels out with two negative threes. All right, hold on. So, where do you, where do you get the two from? Where's the n, where's the two from? So zinc is a positive two charge. I gave you that one because it's a transition metal and they their charges are a little strange. So whenever you give so, us transition no, how do we find, I get how to do this. Yeah, but how Most do you of the time. Find, like, how do you find the charges? I get how to do this. Whatever group it's in. If it's in group one, it's positive one. If it's in group two, it's positive two. If it's in group three, positive three. Okay. Yeah. It's how many electrons they either need to gain or lose. So where is the zinc is a transition metal. It's number thirty. It's it's. Can you go down? Okay. So the transition metals. Okay. Here's. Here's why the transition metals are strange in a nutshell. The transition metals have electrons that are in their D sublevel. Because they are, the transition metals, like that's what that is, the D sublevel. Okay? And so, when they lose electrons, which they will, sometimes they will lose electrons from their S, Sometimes they will lose the electrons from their S and their D sublevel. It really just depends on what they are bonding with. So if you take like scandium, SC, right there on the periodic table, its, it's configuration would end with 4S2, 5, 3, sorry, 4S2, 3D1. Well, sometimes it'll lose just the 4S2 electrons and form a positive two charge. Sometimes it'll lose the 4s2 electron and the 3d electron. In that case, it will form a positive 3. So sometimes scandium will form a positive 2. Sometimes it will form a positive 3. Zinc is one that only forms one charge, a positive 2 charge. And the reason for that is because zinc's d sublevel is completely filled. 
but it loses its four S electrons. So two, two electrons, that's why it has a positive two charge. I would not expect you just to pick out the charge of a transition metal. Like I'm not gonna make you memorize like what the charges are on the transition metal. So will that typically be given to us? Yes, or you would be able to find it with what I'm gonna give you. All right, so I get this question. Okay. All right, so let's go back up here to this top section. Um, <clears throat> all right, so what we have right here, we have uh, zinc and phosphide. So zinc is a positive two, phosphide is a negative three. So if you crisscross those, you would get Z in what? Three. Three P two. No, you will not have any charges in the formulas. Damon? Um, yeah, actually, the cation always goes first. So the metal always goes before the nonmetal. Um, now, one other thing that I need to show you that is not necessarily super obvious. Okay, look, if you have something that is like, like this one right here, zinc pairing with oxide. Zinc is a positive two, oxide is a negative two. You don't make the formula Zn2O2. You reduce it. So instead of Zn2O2, it's just ZnO because both those numbers are divisible by two. So it would become just ZnO. Now the other place where that is a little funky, um, so like, right here with aluminum and nitride. Aluminum's positive three, nitride's negative three. That would reduce to one to one. The other place would be, there are times like with lead, especially, lead can be a positive four charge. Sometimes lead will pair with oxygen. Oxygen is a negative two charge. Both those are divisible by two. So when we crisscross this, we would get PB2O4. That you need to reduce. So it would just be PBO2. It'd be PBO2. Guys, see what you have in the little graph. What are you trying to figure out? I'm not trying to figure out anything. I'm just telling you some exceptions. What's that little number? Z and what? Z and O. Z and three P two. All right. So let's do a few more of these um, with aluminum. All right. If you pair aluminum with phosphide, what's your formula going to be? A L P. Alp. Aluminum and nitride. That's going to be ALN, just a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, let's look at potassium. Uh, potassium and chloride, KCl. Potassium and phosphide, K3. Well, the three means how many elements there are. So if you put it after the P, that means three phosphoruses. But oh, you yeah, want three potassium. You oh, want because it switches. Right. Switches. Yeah. All right. So gallium is positive three. Chloride, negative one. So that would be G A C L three. Silver and chloride, it's going to be AgCl. And then lithium and chloride, LiCl. All right. Now, real quick. 
Okay, we're gonna do this in like a couple minutes. <clears throat> How do I write the formula from a compound and a compound from a formula? All right, so when you name an ion a compound, it's pretty easy. You name the cation first. Just say the name of the element. So like right here, this would be aluminum. And then you name the anion, changing the name, the, the end of the name to IDE. So like you guys have heard of sodium chloride. Well, Na is sodium. You just name the element. Second element, chlorine, gets changed to chloride. Okay? So like right here, magnesium is Mg, chloride is Cl. What's the charge on magnesium? Positive two. Positive two. What's the charge on chlorine? A chloride. Negative one. So when we crisscross, we get Mg Cl two. When, when you write a formula, the formula should have no charges in it. Once you crisscross those numbers, you take the numbers, you do not take the charge. What, what do you, mean by that? you drop the charge. So basically don't Look, worry about positive. Jimmy, do you see a positive or a negative charge in here? No. No. When you write the formula, this is the formula, you don't write the charge. The charge can be here because this is an ion. Once they come together, it's not separate ions anymore. It is an ionic compound. It's neutral. Okay? Because you have basically two negative chlorine ions pairing with one positive two magnesium ion. That cancels out. So it's neutral. So that negative one is the charge and we're getting rid of it? That's, that's a negative one on the ion by itself when it's paired up that charge cancels out. Isabella? Why does the end of the name change? The end of the name? Yeah. That's just the rule. Um, if it's an anion, it, it they just change the ending of the name to IDE. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are certain rules. There's rules for naming ionic compounds and there's rules for naming covalent compounds. Um, they're both a little different. Um, ionic compounds, you just name the first element, say the name of the element. Second element, you always change the IDE. So your second elements are always going to be non-metals. So I'll take you through these real quick, like starting with, you know, like fluorine. Fluorine becomes fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, um, telluride, selenide, sulfide, oxide, nitride, phosphide, carbide, and that's really all of your non-metals that you're going to have. Which, you guys have, uh, you've heard of fluoride before. Where have you heard of fluoride? In your tap water or your toothpaste. A lot of toothpaste will have fluoride toothpaste in it. It helps, helps to strengthen your teeth. Um, so those are fluoride ions. All right, 